Okay, this sermon is entitled, Caraphobia. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 130 reads, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Now, I've entitled this Caraphobia for a reason. Caraphobia is the fear of grace. The word charis means grace in Greek. And there's also the Greek mythological goddess Charis, who basically exuded grace or beauty and splendor. So I think this is a very theologically befitting term because there are people out there that hate grace and it's because they're afraid of it. And there's a big difference between a normative fear and an actual phobia. We've all heard of phobias like agoraphobia, the fear of crowded spaces. And then there's arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. Claustrophobia, the fear of confined spaces. And then there's acrophobia, the fear of heights. Bibliophobia, the fear of books. Ombrophobia, the fear of rain. Pyrophobia, the fear of fire. And then there's hippopotomonstra sesquipedaliophobia, the fear of long words. And the difference is, let's say a person has ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. Well, this type of person would not even be able to be exposed to a rubber snake without totally freaking out and getting all apoplectic, corybantic, and histrionic. Their, their phobia is that extreme. So I believe that these grace haters, these reprobates who call what we believe, the free gracers, hyper grace and easy believism, I believe they have caraphobia. And what do they do about it? Well, nothing. They call us antinomians because they're going to hell and I guess they have to have something insulting to say. Now, what is an antinomian? Antinomian simply means against the law. And when it comes to salvation, you have to be against the law because the Apostle Paul made it clear, you know, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, and that we're saved by faith apart from the deeds of the law. But see, what these unsaved devils do is they try to say that we're antinomians in a practical sense, meaning that we have no fear of the law, we have no fear of consequences, we'll go out and violate the speed limit, commit such crimes as insurance fraud, identity theft, tax evasion, money laundering, ripping the tag off a mattress, whatever. And that's not the case at all. As free gracers, we're not against the law. We just don't believe the law saves. So now, what I'm going to do about these stupid cowards is I'm going to play some jungle rot because they think that this is going to send them to hell. So go ahead and plug your ears. Here goes. Now, these people actually think that if they listen to this, they're going to hell. Now, they are going to hell, but it's not because they li they're listening to jungle rot. It's because they have not trusted Christ to save them. They're still in their sins, and they're afraid of grace. Anyway, the point is, is that these people out there don't understand that grace abounds. And we're not promoting sin. We're just telling people that, hey, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. But these people, these caraphobes, they don't even want grace to exist, let alone the fact that it super abounds. Turn over to Romans chapter 5. Let's take a look at verses 19 and 20, and it reads, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So now, we're not supposed to be using grace as a license to sin. That's why it says in verse number 1 of chapter 6, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Okay? The truth is, is that everyone does continue in sin, and that's why grace continues to abound for those who are actually saved. But as for these caraphobic, grace-hating reprobates, they get no grace, and they can go to hell listening to jungle rot and whatever else they're doing, because they're sinners too. And that's the thing they fail to understand, is that they're sinners who need grace. The free gracers are just sinners saved by grace. Big Brobdignagian difference. And the real difference between myself and one of these, you know, Calvinistic Presbyterian, caraphobic losers is 
My sins have been paid for, and I'm heaven bound. Their sins have not been paid for. They reject grace, and they're hell bound. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.